Hey y'all. So I just want to make a follow up video from yesterday because the feedback you guys provided me was so insightful, but also sitting on my emotions and not um, jumping and reacting at the first feeling I got was really helpful. Um, you know, and after dissecting that letter several times and dissecting my own response in that video, um, it's given me time to think about it and excuse the mess behind me. I'm getting ready for an appointment. Um, I have to go get a shot in my back because my back is fucking hurting really bad. Um... So after the, you know, and hearing your guys' responses, how many of you, I mean, I knew there was a lot of you guys, um, but just hearing the responses that I was getting, there's so many of you that are going through similar situations, almost identical situations, and that, to know that there's so many of us out there going through these situations is really tough. Um... And I want to give some insight. Mainly, this video is directed at my little sister. Maybe she'll see it. Maybe my mom will show it to her. Or maybe it could help some of you guys. She asks me in that letter, How did you find peace? How, how were you at peace? That, because that's what a lot of people don't understand about me. Is how I could... Now, I'm not truly at peace 100% of the time. Absolutely not. That is impossible as a human, I think. Um, I think suffering is a part of this journey as a human being. And I think there are ways to... I'm sorry, I'm, I'm talking slow because I'm processing... How to say this, you know? I Maybe I should write a script so I could say shit faster next time. But, like, she wants to know how I'm at peace. People don't understand how I could have gone through the shit I went through and be at peace. The main point of that how I achieved this piece, because I'll tell you, before 2019, that's how recent my piece is, 2019, okay? Not even that 20, I'm still working on it, okay? It's still a work in progress, but I used to not be able to just sit in my house. I used to not be able to be alone. I used to have to have a man around me. Um, and a lot of the times, you know, that made me cross my own boundaries. That made me um, I can't think of the word I'm, I'm thinking of. I can't find it. But like, how many times I had to disregard my own thoughts, beliefs, morals, um, what I thought was right. How many times I had to disregard that just so I could keep certain people in my life. Um, I was heavily, heavily on drugs solely to get my mind somewhere else, just to like shut my mind up. Just so I could just float freely through the day with a smile on my face and it not totally be fake. Um, so it used to be impossible for me to feel an ounce of peace. I used to not be able to fall asleep at night. I used to have to drug myself with so many fucking... I used to take a literal handful. I'm not, I'm not exaggerating here, you guys. A literal handful handful of Advil PMs to knock myself out just so I could get a night's of sleep. That's how bad 
I was not at peace. Um, and you know, I, I, for a long time, I kept trying to make relationships work that obviously and blatantly were never going to work because I was the only one wanting the relationship because of my own neediness, my own, um, codependency, my need for having to, I needed people. I needed people to cling to. Not that I needed people because I loved them, even though I did, but it was mo mainly because I needed somebody to cling to like a life raft. Please save me. Knowing, and I knew deep down, I was the only one. I was just like you're the only one that can save you because there is no God coming out of the sky. I'll tell you that right now. That's never going to happen. There is no being, I don't believe at least, and I'm not shitting on people's beliefs because I know people have their beliefs and they're rooted in different things, mainly fear. Sorry to call that out. It's like a life raft though. You are clinging as a human being. I think that's a human condition as well. That thing, our minds can't, there's so much in this life. There's so many variables that, that you have to find something to cling to. Otherwise, you're going to drown. You are going to drown because it's too overwhelming. It's too much. <clears throat> now, how I did it, I faced myself. I finally, because the person I was running from and the shit I was running from was me and my own past and the shit I used to do and how I was, and, and the truth of who I was underneath the lie I was telling people who I was. So I had a story crafted about who the, the person I am today. So the, the story you have about yourself that you tell people because you're ashamed of the truth. That truth is true. That truth is possible. Just the same way that there's so many variables in this life. If you just grab on to the truth, the truth, not, not, um, a white lie, not something that makes you feel comfortable because you're scared. But if you face it, if you face, okay, one day I'm going to die and that's okay. One day I will die. My body will die, but me, Jennifer, my energy, my, my charisma, my, um, my spirit, that can never be destroyed, okay? It can never be destroyed because it is a form of energy. Energy, if you do any quantum physics research, you know energy cannot be destroyed. It can only be transferred or transformed, okay? So your imminent death as a human, as this human, as Jennifer E. Hammonds, Norris, is imminent. That's going to happen. No matter how healthy I try to be, no matter, no matter what, no matter what I do, I am going to, this body will die. Okay. And that's okay. I've come to terms with that. I'm not scared of that anymore. I used to be so terrified. I was so terrified of death that I, I think that was my big thing about not being able to fall asleep. I was scared that I would not wake up and that was the, that was going to be it, you know? And I just didn't feel like I was ready to die because I was still a kid. <laughs> I was a kid thinking this shit. Okay. I was a kid thinking, oh my God, we're all going to die. One day my family's going to die and I'm going to be here by myself. Every single fear that I used to have, I faced it. I faced it and I faced myself. I, I got off all of the drugs so my mind could become clear and I could figure out who I was. Who is Jennifer? That's That was my quest for the last, and it's still my quest because it's an ever-evolving like the self, there's so many people who think the self, yourself, your 
your personality, who you are, your habits, all this. There's so many people who think that is solid. It's set in stone. There's no way you can change it. That's just who the fuck I am. You accept it or you don't. And that's false. It's so false that the self is rigid. It, that It's a rigid thing that... And even if it were a rigid thing, just like water can erode stone over time, your efforts to change who you are will eventually erode your old self. And it will eventually override and you will become anew. It's, it's very hard. And it takes a lot of determination and it takes a lot of will. But I believe that each and every one of us possess that will. Okay, remember in the Bible, all those things it was telling you about free will? All of your efforts will pay off eventually. But you have, to, like if your personality, like mine was, was something that caused many people hurt and pain, including your own self, mainly my own self. It's, it will take years to erode that. It will take years to override that. And don't be scared of that journey because the person that you believe that you could become absolutely is who you can become if you put in the work, okay? You can't be scared of the work you can't be scared of the everyday mundane, um, you know, every day is going to feel the same for a while. And, and maybe that's just life. Every day kind of feels the same, except for there's some different days that are sprinkled in that feel overwhelmingly happy or sad or this or that, you know. Oh, and see, I've, I'm, I, I'm just, I'm getting over being sick, you guys. I think I had COVID a couple weeks ago after Briar and them left, um, cause it knocked my ass down. I couldn't do shit for like two weeks, and so I've, I've still got this like cough going on. Um. But yeah, I finally, after many years um, of, of being somebody else and placating people around me, placating mean, like, if you don't know what that word is, means, stop, look it up. Okay, pause this video, look up that word. Um, Many years of placating people and pretending I was different than what I was. Um, that's what caused me more hurt than anything. More pain, more, you know, going over my boundaries, um, you know, crossing, like going over my limits. For, you know, for my early 20s, I didn't know my limit on alcohol. Like we all have a limit. There's a there's a certain point where you just become belligerent or you black out. Um, and mine is three shots, okay? Three shots and that's it. I can feel buzzed and happy and keep the party, everything cool and everybody cohesive and copacetic at three shots. After three shots, I'm the worst person you've ever met ever, ever. And, you know, there's a lot of people who based their opinion of me on meeting me after those three shots. So, <laughs> which is terrible. Which really sucks because, like, that's absolutely not who I am. But, like, yeah, that's how I did it, you guys. I faced myself. Uh, I faced what was scaring me. I, I didn't go to therapy because... Therapy, as some, and I'm saying this as somebody who was in therapy for over a decade, over a decade, it doesn't work. It doesn't work because you can easily lie to a therapist. Easily. That's what I did. You could easily tell them, oh, you can make up all kinds of shit. And that therapist, unfortunately, will believe it because they've probably heard crazier. So you could 
invent a whole person. And, at, but you can't lie to yourself. I mean, you can for a while. But after a certain point, like, it starts to, like, you're, all the things that you used to do to shut up that little voice saying you're lying to yourself, you're not being true to who you are, you're lying to the world, like, all of, all of the things that you do to drown that will eventually stop working, the drugs, um, church even, like, everything... Anything that a human can do to, like, pacify their pain instead of deal with it will eventually stop working. And that's what happened to me. Like, all of the things that I was doing eventually stopped working. And I was in a constant state of sadness and depression and anger. And I finally just went into that. I let myself be angry. I let myself break all the shit in my house. And I did. I let myself run off all the people around me. I let myself do everything that I was feeling and stifling over the years. I just finally, I took the top off the bottle and I let it all out. And I'll tell you what, what I thought would happen didn't happen, okay? It actually was the reverse. People are now wanting to come more towards me, the people that I pushed out. Every, all the people I pushed out from every part of my life, they're all, at some point in the last five years, they have all circled back and tried to be a part of my life again. And I am happy to say that I was, I'm able to stay true to my own boundaries and say, no, you're not allowed to come into my life and disrupt things and, and cause me chaos um, I stopped letting people move into my house because I realized I needed a space where I could take all of those assumptions about who I was and, you know, all the stuff. I could take it all off at the end of the day and just be myself um, and not feel judged. But yeah, that's this video is to Dorothy, my sister, my family. If you guys see this, I really hope it helps and I hope you start the journey of facing who you are and, and not just apologizing for things, but actually facing who you are and actually allowing yourself to change. I love you all so much and thank you so much for always helping me and being there for me. You guys are really awesome. Love y'all. Bye.